Hello students, in today's lecture we will talk about the pharyngeal apparatus which is a very important short note. So, when you will have the pharyngeal apparatus, the first thing arises that what is the apparatus. Now, this apparatus is made up of four component. These components are known as pharyngeal arches, pharyngeal cleft, pharyngeal pouch and pharyngeal membrane. So, all those four things will join together has a name is pharyngeal apparatus. Now, dear students, when you will see the developing embryo, what you are going to notice that between the developing brain and this pericardial swelling, you will have a surface depression is known as stomodium, which is your future mouth. But when you will see the actual arrangement, you will realize that this is your pericardial region and the developing heart and this is your oral cavity. So, they are not very adjacent to each other, there is a long neck is present. Now, in human beings, this neck is formed by the pharyngeal apparatus. So, what is the function of pharyngeal apparatus? The pharyngeal apparatus is going to form your neck region, which lies anterior to the sternocleidomastoid. Now, what are the structure in front of sternocleidomastoid you will have? So, the structure around your stomodium or the oral cavity like maxillary bone, like mandibular bone, then you will have hyoid bone, then you will have thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, thyroid gland, parathyroid glands. So, all these structures in your neck comes from these pharyngeal apparatus. Now, the important question comes is that the structures of pharyngeal apparatus, that means the pharyngeal arches start to appear around fourth week of intrauterine life. Now, this is a question of your exam that what are the important or characteristic features of the embryo in fourth week. So, the first is your almost completion of the neurulation that means the formation of neural tube. The second change which you will see at fourth week is the somite differentiation. Third, you will see that there is a appearance of your pharyngeal arches and fourth differentiation is the appearance of your upper limb buds. So, these are the four most important characteristics in the fourth week of intrauterine life. Clear? So, today we are discussing the pharyngeal arches. Now, pharyngeal arches is a part of pharyngeal apparatus. So, let us see the pharyngeal arches. Now, the pharyngeal arch means that it is a mesodermal bar and these bar lies in the floor and lateral wall of primitive pharynx. Now, you know that when there is a formation of the foregut, that means the part of the yolk sac which trap into the head fold is known as foregut. Now, this foregut is having this cranial end and this cranial end is known as primitive pharynx. Now, anterior to this primitive pharynx, you have this developing brain vesicle and here you will have your developing heart and between them you will have a stomodium. Now, what will happen that when there is a formation of pharyngeal arches. Now, pharyngeal arches are the U-shaped thick bars of your mesoderm. So, these bars will take the place between the stomodium and this pericardial area. And these bars are having two half, right half and the left half and both the half meet together in the midline and these are known as pharyngeal arches. So, if I am talking about the arch, basically I am talking about mesodermal thick cords. You will see the mesodermal thick cords or the bars, they are lined on outer side and inner side by the ectoderm and endoderm. So, on the outer side between the two bar, the groove are seen and that is known as cleft which are lined by ectoderm and on the inner side or towards the pharyngeal wall, they are having the pouches which are lined by the endoderm. So, if I am saying right short node on arch, I am writing about the derivatives of the mesoderm which is present in the bar. If I am talking about write the short note on cleft, then I am talking about the derivatives of the ectoderm which is lining outside. If I am having the question on the pouch, I am talking about the endodermal derivatives which are lining inside. Clear? So, today we are discussing the arch. So, the first thing arises where is the position of arch? So, students I already told you that arch lies in the floor that means anteriorly and on both the side of the lateral aspect of developing pharynx. Now, if you will see the arch, these arch are made up of the core of mesoderm and this mesoderm outside line by the ectoderm. So, here you can see that this is the ectoderm, this is inside is endoderm. Now, between the two arches, the 
Externally, you will have a depression is known as cleft and between the two arches, internally, you will have one more depression is known as pouch. So, pouches are the features of inside and cleft is a feature of outside. Now, how many these such U-shaped bar appear? So, initially, there are six bars appear, but later on, the fifth will disappear. So, when you will give the number, this is your first, second, third, fourth and this has to be fifth, but it is sixth. There is no fifth. The fifth has been disappeared, which is rudimentary. Now, the student's question comes is, what is the source of mesenchyme in these developing pharyngeal uh, arches? Answer is, the source is neural crest cells and paraaxial lateral plate mesoderm. So, these are the two important sources of your mesenchyme in this rod-shaped arches of pharyngeal apparatus. Now, when you will see the pharyngeal apparatus, each apparatus mesenchyme will differentiate into the four components. Now, what these four components? These four components are cartilage, muscle, nerve and artery. So, this is again a question of your exam that what are the components of every pharyngeal arch? So, pharyngeal arch is having four component, cartilage, muscle, nerve and artery. Clear? Now, the second question come is, what is the source of neural crest cells? Now, here you can see that neural crest cells are the cells which are present at these neural folds. And once the tube will form, these crest cells will separate from the tube. Now, these are the uh, specialized cells which are present on the fold of developing neural tube. Now, my dear students, suppose you are having the pharyngeal arch here. Now, this is one of the pharyngeal arch. Now, the question is that neural crest cells of this arch is coming from upper part or thoracic region or lumbar region or tail end. What is the source of neural crest cell? So, the answer is that these neural crest cells which are going to invade the pharyngeal arch coming from this area that means around the developing brain. So, it, this question has been asked so many times that neural crest cells of the pharyngeal arches arises from which part of the neural tube? Answer is the area around the developing brain. That means this anterior part of the neural tube when show the folding, when this folding will take place, these neural crest cells migrate from their original place into these pharyngeal arches. Clear? So, now let us see that what these things are going to do. So, the first thing is that when you are talking about the neural crest cell, these neural crest cell will go and form the skeletal element. And these skeletal elements are going to form your different bones of pharyngeal arches. So, this is the important thing that there is a cartilage and this cartilage component of the pharyngeal arch comes from the neural crest cell. The next component is muscle. So, muscular component comes from the mesoderm. The third component is your artery. Now, dear students, when you will see the arterial component, you have to understand that there is a formation of two arteries. One is forming on the dorsal side, that is known as dorsal aorta. Second is forming on the ventral aspect. This is your truncus arteriosus part of this developing heart tube. Now, what will happen? There is a formation of a connection between the aorta and the truncus arteriosus and that connections are passing through these pharyngeal arches. Clear? And these connections when they are passing through the pharyngeal arches are known as arteries of pharyngeal arches. Now, these arteries develop inside the pharyngeal arches from the mesenchyme and angioblast cells. Clear? So, First, there is a formation of skeletal elements from the neural crest cells, plus there is a formation of the muscle component from the mesoderm, there is a formation of the arterial component from your angioblast cells and the mesoderm itself and the fourth component is your nerves. Now, here you have to understand that these nerves are the cranial nerves which are arising from hind brain vesicle. From where? Hind brain vesicle. Now, here if you will see in this diagram, you can appreciate that this is your developing brain vesicle which is divided into the three part forebrain, this is midbrain, this is hindbrain. Now, from the hindbrain, here you can see that 
the cranial nerves are entering inside the different pharyngeal arches. So, these is your fifth, this is your seventh, this is your ninth and this is your tenth cranial nerve. So, this is a very commonly asked question in your exam that which cranial nerves are going to supply your pharyngeal arches. So, which cranial nerve? Fifth, seventh, ninth and tenth. Clear? So, these nerves are arising from, answer is, this hind brain vesicle. So, now let us discuss the arches one by one. So, first is the first pharyngeal arch derivative. Now, when you will see the skeletal element of the first arch, you have to understand that the first arch divide into the two part. Now, the upper portion is known as maxillary arch and lower portion is longer is known as mandibular arch. Now, this maxillary arch is going to form the bones of your upper jaw. That means, it is going to form your maxilla. Plus, it is going to form your zygomatic bone. It is going to form palatine bone and it is going to form some part of temporal bone. So, the question one is name the bones derived from maxillary process. Zy maxilla, zygomatic, palatine and temporal bone part. Then, when you will see this lower arch, that is your mandibular process of the first arch, it is having a named cartilage component is known as Meckel's cartilage. So, the Meckel's cartilage is a name given to the cartilage component of first arch, but not to the maxillary process, to the mandibular process. Now, this Meckel's cartilage give rise to the different bones and these are the two ear ossicles that is malleus and incus. Then it form the spine of a sphenoid and the perichondrium of Meckel's cartilage will form two ligament. One is anterior ligament of malleus, second is sphenomandibular ligament. Lastly, what will happen that there is a mesodermal condensation take place around the Meckel's cartilage and that is going to form your mandible. Clear? So, what are the bones formed by the first pharyngeal arch? So, the bones are maxilla, palatine bone, part of your temporal bone, zygomatic bone, then your malleus, incus, spine of sphenoid and mandible. Apart from that, it gives rise to the two ligaments, anterior ligament of malleus and sphenomandibular ligament. Now, what are the muscles arises from the first arch? Now, before reading the muscle, you should know about the main nerve of the first arch is mandibular nerve. That means, when you are talking about the muscles, you should keep this thing in mind that all the muscles which are derived from the first arch supplied by the mandibular nerve. So, these are the muscles which are known as MAT mat. So, M for the muscles of mastication, that means masseter temporalis medial lateral pterygoid. Then it is having the mylohyoid then it is having the anterior belly of digastric and then it is having the tensor veli palati and tensor tympani. Then we will talk about the now. So, my dear students, as there are two process of the first arch, so maxillary process supplied by maxillary nerve which is pure sensory and mandibular process supplied by mandibular nerve which is sensory as well as motor. Now, here this is the important question. What do you mean by pre-trimatric nerve of the first arch? Now, my dear students, you know that the arches are horseshoe shape structure which are enclosing your developing pharynx. Now, what is happening that between the two arches, there is a groove is present. Now, in this groove, the nerve is running and that nerve divide into the two branch. So, if we will make these arches straight, now, suppose this is the one arch, this is the second arch. Now, this groove between the two arches is known as trema. What do you mean by the trema? Trema means the groove or the cleft. Now, in this groove, this is the nerve which is entering. Now, once the nerve will enter into the groove, it will divide into the two branch. One will go in the upper arch, one will go into the lower arch. Now, this nerve which is going into the upper arch is known as pre-trimatric that means before the trima and this nerve which is going into the lower arch is known as post-trimatric clear what is that post-trimatric means below the sulcus pre-trimatric before the sulcus now 
this post traumatic is going to form your definitive nerve of a particular arch while the pre traumatic nerve will disappear in the same way if you see this arch there is a one now now this is the pre traumatic of this arch and it will give it pre post traumatic of this lower arch so later on in the human being what will happen this pre traumatic will disappear so now this arch is having a single now which is a definitive now derived from post traumatic now that means in the human beings all the cranial nerves which are supplying the pharyngeal arch are post traumatic nerves except the first arch where you will have the component of pre traumatic now persist and that is in the form of corda tympani because we know that this is the facial now this facial now when running into this trima it is giving the pre traumatic now in the cranial one and post traumatic now in this caudal arch now this post traumatic now which is a branch of facial become the definitive now of the second arch but its pre traumatic branch that means corda tympani persist in the first arch so that's why the first arch is having two now pre traumatic and post traumatic post traumatic is the mandibular and pre traumatic is corda tympani in the remaining arches you have only the single now which actually represent their post traumatic now what is the artery of fourth, ar fourth arch is maxillary artery now we'll move to the second arch second arch is known as hyoid arch now second arch cartilage is having a name is richards cartilage and it is going to form your s structures as for stapes as for stylohyoid ligament as is stylet process of temporal bone then it is going to form the lesser cornu of the hyoid bone and it is form the superior half the upper half of the body of hyoid bone so when you will see the hyoid bone this is the structure of the hyoid bone and this hyoid bone is made up of these lesser and greater horn or the cornu and this is the body so this lesser horn with this upper half of the body develops from the second arch cartilage now it will give rise to the muscles these muscles all are supplied by the facial now like facial expression muscles then you will have stapedius muscle in the ear then you will have stylohyoid muscle and it also supply the posterior belly of digastric and auricular muscle what is the now facial now and what is the artery the artery is hyoid artery and your stapedial artery now here in these two diagram i try to explain you the difference between the two ligaments of the first and second arch now here in this diagram you can see that this is your stylet process and from the stylet process this ligament is going to the hyoid bone so what is this ligament stylo hyoid ligament now in this diagram you can see one more ligament now this is the ligament is coming on the inner side of the mandible and that is your is sphino mandibular ligament so there are two ligament sphino mandibular and stylo hyoid now stylo hyoid comes from the second arch while sphino mandibular comes from the first arch of the pharyngeal apparatus clear now we'll move to the third pharyngeal arch now third pharyngeal arch cartilage is going to form your lower part of the body of hyoid bone and greater cornu or greater horn so when you will see the hyoid bone now what is the development of hyoid bone answer is second and third arch cartilage second arch will form your lesser horn and upper part of the body third will form the greater horn and the lower part of the body the third arch will form only one muscle is stylopharyngeus which is a longitudinal muscle of the pharynx the nerve is glossopharyngeal now and the artery is common carotid and internal carotid arteries then you will have the fourth and sixth arch now the fourth and sixth arch cartilage is fused together and they are going to form basically your all the laryngeal cartilages like thyroid cricoid arytenoid corniculate cuneiform the remaining is epiglottis so epiglottis does not derive from here so except the epiglottis all the laryngeal cartilages comes from the cartilage component of fourth and sixth arch now when we will talk to the muscles of the fourth and sixth arch the muscles are different why because the nerves are different if you will see the fourth arch the fourth arch nerve is superior laryngeal nerve 
and the sixth arch nerve is recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now you know that recurrent laryngeal nerve supply all the muscles of larynx except cricothyroid. So the sixth arch will give rise to all the intrinsic muscles of larynx except cricothyroid. And you know that cricothyroid supplied by the superior laryngeal nerve, that's why the fourth arch muscle component give rise to the cricothyroid muscle plus you know that superior laryngeal also supply the constrictors of the pharynx, it also supply the soft palate muscles. But here you know that soft palate muscle is having a tensor velli palate and we have already seen that tensor velli palate supplied by the mandibular now. So tensor velli palate does not arises from muscular component of fourth arch. Tensor velli palate is a derivative of first arch muscle component. Now, what are the arteries of the fourth and sixth arch? So fourth arch artery on the right side, right subclavian, on the left side, arch of aorta. While the sixth arch artery on right side, right pulmonary, left side, left pulmonary, and ductus arteriosus. Clear? Now these are the two diagrams which you have to draw in exam. Here you have to mention that on the inner side, the each arch lined by the endoderm. On outside, it is lined by the ectoderm. And this middle portion, which is purely and purely mesodermal, is your pharyngeal arches. Now each arch is having four components. One is your arterial component, cartilaginous component, muscle component, and nerve component. Clear? So dear students, at the end of this session of the pharyngeal arches, you should keep this thing in mind that every arch is having four components and the four components are going to form the derivatives in each and every arch. So this is the most important question which you should have in your exam and I think that now you have the idea how to write in your exams. So this is all for the session. Thank you.